It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Atlanta Falcons. And it's all up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Brandon Gond and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? to do the honors and we are underway from Atlanta. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28 yard line. So the new look Steelers offense headed out for their first drive led by a man in his 13th NFL season now. First is a Steeler, Russell Wilson. After a tough couple of years in Denver, Wilson finally gets his fresh start and he's certainly hoping to make the most of it. Truthfully, though, it's been tough sledding ever since being traded from Seattle a few years back. But he still has the talent and tools to make this next chapter a positive one. They go play action with Wilson. They'll roll him out right. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, if they have any thoughts of coming in here and getting this road victory, that's not the way to start it out on the first play of the game. Yeah, one thing you always say when you go on the road, take the crowd out of the game. They actually brought the crowd into it by permitting that sack right out of the gate. A first carry for Najee Harris. And even with that broken tackle, can't get very far. Stops short of the 30. Give them four on the carry there, but that only takes them back to where they started. Third and ten. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he's got Rome down to the 10. And did he get in? No, down at the one-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And what a letdown after a huge play. He's going to pull this in and then set sail for the end zone. And he nearly made it, too. But he's going to be tracked down just short of the goal line. So a big play there that's going to set him up with first and goal at the one-yard line. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Harris trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Again, it's Harris. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris taking it in from a yard out. And the Steelers will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. And how nice is it to have a guy like Najee Harris in the backfield when you get down near the goal line? He can use his 230-plus pound frame to just get you those tough yards, and he finishes things off here with a touchdown run. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. 
That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So the Falcons make their way out behind their new quarterback for 2024. Signed back in March, the veteran Kirk Cousins. And coming off of an offseason where Kirk Cousins was coming back from an Achilles injury, he thought that was going to be his biggest challenge. Instead, the Falcons drafted Michael Penix out of Washington in the first round. And while that was a jolt, Kirk Cousins has a great ability to just shake things off move forward and let his talents come through. They'll motion the tight end across the formation. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Here's second and ten. A run for the first time would be John Robinson. And he'll get a couple up to the 29. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And force the incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Here now a third down and eight. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. From the gun, here's Cousins. A complete to Drake London. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost start in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. Here's Austin. It's a four-yard return following a punt of 49. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The visitors' offense, led by their wide receiver, headed out for their second possession. And he's had an early impact on the game, sensational so far. And they'll likely be looking to find more ways to get him involved. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. And look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. He's settling in nicely here in the first quarter running the football. Remember, he already has the touchdown run. And you can feel the vibe, can't you? He's in unison with his offensive front. They are in concert together. So if you're flipping over to the other side line of scrimmage, they've got to be more physical and handle some of these gaps that have been created. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. And they'll stop him after a gain of a couple to the 33. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation, already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Wilson. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pick up there, 21 yards. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, 
But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Here's Wilson. A short one there to Fryermuth. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and three. Now Wilson. Throw left side, hauled in by Pickens. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Pickens is coming off the season where he clips the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career and averaged a league-leading 18.1 yards per reception. He is truly a budding superstar, and the Steelers are going to continue to find ways to get him the ball. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. He's got this to Pickens. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. George Pickens, 33 yards. And the Steelers lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. Extra point now by Boswell. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was finished off by a George Pickens touchdown grab. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Robinson. Now it appears we have a Steeler here slow to get up. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. In motion goes McLeod. They go play action. Cousins. This one hauled in, and again it's Robinson. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Robinson up the middle. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see. Yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Four yards the pick up. First down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out.
Back to Robinson now on first down. Taken down at the 47-yard line. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 47 now, they work with a second and seven. A first carry for Tyler Algier. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game, maybe establish the run? I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one, and what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football, let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. And a dump off here to Robinson. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. So from the 37, here's a second down and nine. To throw, Cousins. That's to the former Bear, Darnell Mooney. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 26. 11 more yards there. This methodical drive continues. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much-needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. There's Moody with another catch. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Jarnell Mooney, 26 yards. And the Falcons have cut it back within a score. When you're a great route runner, it makes you that much better as a receiver because now your quarterback trusts that you're going to be where he expects and he's able to deliver the ball on time. Extra point attempt here still to come. And that one makes it 14 to 7. So that drive in total eight plays. And finishing it all off was Darnell Moody with the touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. And a pretty slick return there. Almost got it to the 45. Officially, they'll call him down at the 44. The Steelers offense and George Pickens set to take over again. And what a start he's off to. You don't want to start prorating numbers out for four quarters, but it's fair to say this defense is going to have to find some way to slow him down. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Now, right now, they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. Throwing is Wilson. This throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, it's Wilson. Looking right side, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. 
Well, this was a 14-0 game not too long ago. Things were looking pretty good. And then you give up the touchdown on the last drive. Now the interception. So that's a lesson in trying to stay vigilant, isn't it? You have to stay on top of things. Can't relax too much because, as you noted, things change. Now they've got to go out there and get a spark going again and try and slow down this comeback. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he stopped immediately there. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It goes as a loss of six, and now third down. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Man open, that's Ray Ray McLeod. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Through one quarter, 14-7 our score. Back now in Atlanta, second quarter action. The Falcons with the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. George Pickens and the Steelers headed back out for another series, making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Matthew Judon in there to take him down. Well, at least it wasn't a turnover like the last drive. You'd think they'd make an adjustment and be ready to make up for that turnover. Instead, just another big play for the defense on that snap. The job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Now it's Wilson. And he'll complete this one to Patterson. They'll wind up getting just a yard. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Here's Wilson. Setting up the screen, Harris. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. A gain of nine, not enough, and it's fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. 
On is the punter, Johnston now, as he sends this one away. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Out of the gun, they give to Robinson. He'll get this down to the 38. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now Cousins. Short throw caught by Pitts. So the completion good for seven there. And third and one now. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Robinson will try to pick it up. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Cousins to throw it. And this is caught at the eight. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. 23 yards on the play. Well, this is a defense that's definitely on their heels now because they gave up the running play for good yardage one play ago. Now the pass here sets this offense up first and goal. They're going to have to dig in strong now because they've been in retreat so far in this drive. This offense on the march. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Throwing his Cousins. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. Kyle Pitts, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Falcons are an extra point away from drawing level. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Coup for the extra point. And we've got a good one, Bruin. We're all knotted up at 14. A drive that time of six plays. And it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. Tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. 
And that 14 0 lead to begin the ball game, well, that's gone now. Time to regroup. I think even up two touchdowns, they knew this wasn't going to be a walk in the park. And I think that's why we would see the head coach going up and down the sidelines telling his team, let's stay with it, let's keep going. It's almost like he knew they were going to make their run at them. And they have. As you said, let's see if they can regroup and get going again. To throw is Wilson. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. Second and ten. Harris running straight ahead. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The offense on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. Play action. Now Wilson. He's got his target. That's complete. And all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 47 yards. They made that way too easy for them. No one is supposed to be that open against an NFL defense. Once he caught the ball, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop him. And he was able to continue downfield after making the catch. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Different story this time around. We had that huge gain followed by a sizable loss here. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. They'll get this complete to Calvin Austin. We'll go down as a gain of six, third and seven now. Was that a design pass, or what was that? It was built into the play call. He had the opportunity to either hand it inside, keep it himself to run it, or do what he just did. Throw that pass inside, hitting a receiver on the run. Now third down and seven. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. Boswell's kick is good. And they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Atlanta regains possession of the football. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. 
And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. So that run play nullified by the holding call on the tight end. Yeah, I just think he needs to get off the ball a lot quicker and get into the block a little bit more effectively. Then he doesn't have to reach and grab and try and hold on. Here's Cousins. Looking deep here for Mooney. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 59 yards. He's already got one touchdown in this first half already. That very nearly was a second. Defensively, they're going to have to figure something out because he's been able to outrun the defenders early and often so far. Cousins now. That's out wide here for Robinson. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Nice job defensively to hold him to four. And now it's second and goal. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. The line of scrimmage is the two here on third and goal. They'll throw again. Cousins. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down. So let's sort this out. So obviously, they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Oh, good looking return set up here. And that's pretty good coverage by the kick team, as he'll only be able to get this past the 15 yard line and no further. The Steelers' offense and Russell Wilson headed back onto the field. And he's done everything you could have asked for coming in. He's spread it around. He hasn't taken many chances. And he's potentially on his way to a big game throwing the football. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now a second and ten. Wilson. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Tough series for the passing game. Things just aren't clicking. Hope it didn't come through on this play and get this series back on track with a completion for enough yardage for a first down. 
The Steelers on third down. They've hit it 50%. Three of six to this point. This is third and ten. Here's one deep for Pickens. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Quality coverage that time to slow down has been the main source of offense against them thus far. Got to find a way to slow down that ball in the air. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. Kirk Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail space. Oh, snail space for him, and he can do whatever he wants. Feels like he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. Cousins. Complete to Mooney on the slant. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That'll put him over 100 yards receiving now here in this first half of action. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he's got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Play action now. Cousins. And it's going to be caught by Pitts. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there, as that will lead us right into the two-minute warning. Now Cousins. Going for Kyle Pitts again. He's got him again. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Cousins. Throw over the middle. Going to be caught here by Pitts. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Kyle Pitts with his second touchdown here in this first half. And they are able to add on to their advantage. So the numbers are starting to pile up here early on. We have yet to reach halftime, yet that is already now four touchdown passes. Two now for the point after. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. So that drive spanned five plays. And it was the tight end Kyle Pitts finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, 
more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Now Wilson. This one left side caught by Patterson. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now it's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench. Not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Falcons offense and Kirk Cousins getting ready for this next possession. And he's had things all his way in this first half. The numbers sensational as he'll look to add to them with another drive here. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. Already enjoying a two-score lead here late in the second quarter. Not a ton of time left. We'll see if they can work this at least into field goal range and try to get three to add on even more to their lead. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. Second down and eight. Working out of the gun, Cousins over the middle, caught by London. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Here now, third and a yard. to throw Cousins able to find the open man that's complete and he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion Cousins again. That's going to be caught downfield by Mooney. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And yeah, that's going to be incomplete. And that's where you're counting on a receiver's size being an advantage. They were hoping he could go up the top of a smaller DB and haul that one in. A good thought, but that time it didn't work out. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Over the middle, that's caught by McLeod. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call.
So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that will extend their lead even further. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. So we are at halftime here in Atlanta with the Falcons out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, and we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. It was a strong first half for the veteran quarterback, Kirk Cousins. He was on point repeatedly, ultimately finishing with four touchdown passes in those first two quarters alone. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Falcons offense and their quarterback ready to go once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner. Yeah, they went to the tunnel with a the lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Cousins to throw it. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. They'll drop to throw. He's got a man complete. And all the way down to the 39. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 47 yards. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead. But those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach, and that's a strong step towards getting it done. 
Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Throwing Cousins. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. That's good. The completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. From the 32-yard line now, here's second and three. Now Cousins. And this will be caught by Mooney. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw, and also a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Targeting Pitts on the out route, and he's got it complete. So five yards here, five on the play, and that will bring up second down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. Here's Cousins. And a dump off here to Robinson. Down at the two. Broke through the first contact, but ultimately stopped short of the goal line. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Ray Ray McLeod with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Falcons take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me very precise methodical as one of the words you've taught me and they just got it done and slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit things looking good for them here in the third quarter not only pulling away but you mentioned that slowly but surely you also drain clock too with yep. a drive like that so you really give yourself an advantage extra point by Koo up and good and the lead down to three touchdowns at 21 Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. carry of the game for Cordero Patterson and that to the 30 it'll be second down they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here and if it's a long play so be it but the main goal get a couple of first downs run some plays run some clock allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score 
Wilson. Got Patterson on the quick slant here. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turn it into a successful play. Now Wilson. That is caught. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10, right at the 40. To throw again is Wilson. That went out wide and intercepted. Picked up by Richie Grant. And the Falcons are going to have it here as they'll start at their own 24-yard line. Carter, I think this one went awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Atlanta prepped and ready for its next possession. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. About set to begin their next drive. The Falcons offense at the line. They're just looking to do more of the same. They were good in the first half. They've extended their lead so far here in the second half. I don't know. They're just looking good on all, hitting on all cylinders right now. And sometimes that means a head coach who really has a finger on the pulse of a team may not have anything to say at all. May oh, tell the rest of the coaches. Just back up a little bit. Just back it off a little bit. This team has it under control. I remember hearing about Bob Knight years ago in oh, basketball. <laughs> getting ready to give the final speech before the gold medal game in 84. And on the board, Michael Jordan had, wrote, had written, Coach, after all we've been through, there's no way we're losing tonight. He didn't even give a pregame speech. Wow. Interesting. Well, right now, no speech is needed. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often. Second and 24. On the give, here's Robinson. And not much here as he'll get it to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. The way things have gone in this one, the running game's been something of an afterthought, and that's not been too bad for them, has it? Yeah, the offensive returns have been good, but I guess we figured he and the ground game would be a bit more involved. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They're able to complete this one to McLeod. And he's out right at the 25. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Charles, he's now over 400 yards passing in this one. It feels like he has a zillion completions. Just a very memorable effort from a guy that we thought could be in line for a big game, and he has exceeded our expectations. That he has, and I'm not really surprised at all because when you look at this offensive unit, they are loaded across the board. And, of course, the guy throwing them, he's a big-time player himself. They brought it from start to finish and really helped get the better of the opposing secondary.
They turn to Harris to begin the drive. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. Patterson on the draw play. Fights him off. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. First down, and they go back to Harris. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. 12 more yards there and another first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, they're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. A short one there to Fryermuth. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. They go play action now. Wilson. And did he get the feet down? No. They'll say he did not. It's incomplete. That was a difficult catch, and I admire the fact that he actually caught the football, worked so hard to get his feet down in bounds, tried to do the toe tap. Look, my dad's an accomplished. Mike Tomlin has reached for that red challenge flag, and he'll throw it out there. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So Mike Tomlin correct in his assessment to throw the flag there. Boswell for the extra point. And the lead will be cut down to 14. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The home team's offense and their quarterback headed out for this next possession. And he's been a nightmare to scheme against throughout this one. This defense has been totally taken apart, and that is borne out in his numbers. He's been terrific all game long.
So first and 10 now from the 30. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. To throw is Cousins. This ball tipped, and it's going to be incomplete. Fortunate maybe to get that back. It's third down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Cousins. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's the Falcons. They've got the football. They've got the lead as we get set to start the fourth. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Cousins. Short throw caught by Pitts. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. To the air again, it's Cousins. Short throw caught by Pitts. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as the tackle is made at the 28-yard line. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. Things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. Play fake, Cousins. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Deshaun Elliott. And the Steelers are right back in this football game. Oh, that's a beautiful read there by the safety. Zone coverage. So he's just going to sit back and watch. He knows he can't get beat deep because he has the end line to protect him. So he can react to everything in front of him. And he makes a great break on the football and comes down with the interception. The Steelers ready for their next possession. The interception was a great starting point, but now they need points pretty quickly, down two scores. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And yeah, boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. Play action. Now Wilson. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. That's Zach Harrison who forced his way in to drop him. 
And of course, that's not an easy man to sack. You know how elusive he can be trying to get outside of the pocket. That was a great play on the defensive side. And I wonder what was going through his mind because he didn't seem as committed to using his legs to pick up yardage. He wanted to keep that play alive, so either take off and go or throw it away. But he held on to the football and ended up getting sacked. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still third down. After the delay, they're backed up even further for third and long. Here's Wilson. And the pressure gets to him again. Grady Jarrett in there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. Well, this has turned into an absolute week to forget for this quarterback. Multiple sacks, pair that with multiple turnovers. As far as he's concerned, if he ever sees this defense again, it'll be way too soon. Here's Cameron Johnston now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Rush, and he will score! Touchdown, Falcons! A great effort there, taking it in. And the Falcons have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. There are plenty of ways for a special teams coach to get excited. And when you block a punt into the end zone and recover for a score, yeah, he's going to be jumping up and down a big way. And as a punter, you know that that clock is ticking. He just didn't get it off in time. Coup for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So the very rare blocked punt scooped and returned for a touchdown. What an exciting play. Touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And bulldozing his way through. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Steelers ready to take over on offense. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now it's Wilson. Throw out right, taken in by Patterson. Nothing at all on that one. It'll be second down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches, 
You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Not what they had in mind there. That's going to go as a loss of four. We'll put that one in the win column for the defense. Trying to contain tight ends in the passing game is so difficult nowadays, but they did in a big way there. Here's Wilson. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Again, Wilson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 27-yard line. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. 54 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Some big plays in the passing game on this drive, and here's one out of the running game. So the passing game, loosening things up. Now there's room to roam. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still first down. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Now Wilson. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. An incomplete pass on first down. Here's second and goal. Wilson. Middle of the field to Jefferson. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Van Jefferson, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept them out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it was all capped off by the Van Jefferson touchdown reception. well now to kick it away after the touchdown and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28 the home team's offense and their quarterback set to take the field once more and he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. The Atlanta offense out there for their next drive. 
Well, don't look now, but they've got a little bit of a battle on their hands again. Back to a two-score game, the interception that led to a touchdown. You'd have to think they're a little more careful here if they, if they do indeed try to throw the football. Yeah, and I was a little surprised by the last throw. You know, that type of throw with this type of a game, I'm going to be very careful about it. Maybe the only throw you make is maybe a toss to your halfback or something <laughs> like that. Otherwise, take care of the thing and finish this bad boy off. Throwing his cousins. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting to gain. Cousins from the gun on third. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Cousins to throw it. Over the middle complete. It's Robinson. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that'll make it second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. They'll bring the tight end in motion right to throw Cousins. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. They'll throw again. Cousins able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Cousins now. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Hand off now to Robinson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. But now he appears to be in some pain. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Coming up on the final two and a half minutes. And boy, has it been fun to watch this offense operate. Quite the display. And now they look to polish it off. Now Cousins. And this will be caught by Mooney. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Hand off to Robinson out of the shotgun. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go.
A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They'll run with Robinson. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Again, it's Robinson. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. They'll try to run with Robinson, and he is going to lose yardage here. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Fourth down, and the attention turns to Falcon kicker Youngway Koo. This to make it a three-score game late. Koo knocks this one through the post, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure, now yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Who just hit the field goal. Now he kicks off. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end... I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. Now Wilson. Completes it to Austin. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. From the gun, it's Wilson. Looking for Pickens. He's got him on the out route. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 14 yards that time for number 14. What an intelligent play as he found open grass and uncovered quickly. A nice clutch play to move the chains. The defense, they've got to do a much better job of accounting for these shorter routes. Throwing is Wilson. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Matt Judon picks up his second sack of the afternoon guys with his talent in the pocket aren't supposed to be getting hit like this and you know an intense conversation with the offensive line is going to occur after this one might not be from him but the offensive line coach will have plenty to say about this game there's Wilson to throw oh that'll be incomplete oh, he took a shot as he let that go and it's going to bring up a third down. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down.
Off the play fake. Here's Wilson. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. That's to his running back complete. But they're going to wrap him up as he'll go down well short of a first. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Falcons' defense stands tall. They'll get the football back. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.